And here's more of what the president said. We must never accept the premise that they put forward because it is a lie. Nor should we grant these terrorists the religious legitimacy that they seek. They are not religious leaders, they're terrorists. And we are not at war with Islam. And terrorism expert Dr. Zudi Jasser joins us. Good evening, doctor. And what are your thoughts today after listening to the president? Greta, I mean, come on. Either they are unsophisticated or they're cowardly or the president is in bed with the Islamists, sadly, because, okay, let's say the radical groups don't have legitimacy. What about the Islamic Republic of Iran? What about the Islamic Republic of Pakistan or the Wahhabis, the monarchs in control of Saudi Arabia that behead people every week that are transmitting the ideas to the petrobillions of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation? I mean, he is insulting, I think, so many millions of reform-minded Muslims who are trying to reject and push back theocracy and the leader of the free world in the meantime is saying that, well, these terror groups are sort of coming out of thin air and it's just sort of a crime education and a job problem, which is absurd and, and oversimplifying. Doctor, I know that you have a long service uh, in our military um, as well as being a, a doctor. And uh, I'm curious what uh, you think in light of where we are tonight with ISIS, in light of the sort of the situation that we find ourselves in the world, what would you recommend? Well, my parents escaped persecution in Syria because America was that city on the hill that gave us religious freedom. I would recommend we need a president with the courage to identify who the enemy is, with the courage to lay out a vision, a strategy for advancing liberty, not just countering the symptom of violent extremism, but leading the American public and not insulting us and saying, you know, the American public has the intelligence to dissect political Islam away from liberal reform-minded Islam, and we can do this. That that's the time in history the president should lead us into. That's where America was in rejecting Christian theocracy in the 17th and 18th century, and Islam is right now. That's what I would want in my commander-in-chief and why I served 11 years, because I think America is up to the task. I don't think the White House thinks we are. So what, how do you characterize the president's strategy? I mean, I was listening to the president today, and, you know, this is, we're, we're still in the talk phase. We're still in the dissecting of language phase, and ISIS is growing. It's spreading to, it's spreading to Libya. It's not getting smaller. Well, the, the president called his doctrine the uh, a strategic patience. Uh, I would call it the Darwin doctrine of letting the most evil, the ones with the most money and military, survive. ISIS would not exist if it wasn't for Assad and the way he genocidally killed the moderates while leaving ISIS alone. So you need a strategy. And ultimately, there isn't one. You need a strategy for a liberty doctrine. I hope the next president brings that forward in the Middle East. And it's going to be generational. The short-term strategy is to decimate groups like ISIS, as President Bush did with Al-Qaeda. The long-term strategy is to advance liberty, engage civil society, and engage reformists, and take sides within the House of Islam against the theocrats, which are dominating every conversation for Muslims, both domestically in America and abroad at the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. 